vertizontal Euroshma gimmick. If there's a triumvirate more likely to inspire horror in the hearts of Shmup fans, I have yet to hear of it. Power Rumi is all three, but while its vertizontal orientation is an absolute, is it fair to call its three-pronged colour-based attack system a gimmick? Or is it a well-integrated core mechanic? And more importantly, does the fact it's from French developers Manufacturer 43 condemn it to the status of Euroshmup, or simply make it a shmup that happens to be from Europe? Well, let's dive in and find out. Now the first of these questions is easy to answer. Nobody refers to Ikaruga's polarity mechanic as a gimmick, and nobody should refer to Pawarumi's red, blue, green, rock, paper, scissors system as one either. Instead, it should be recognised for what it is, which is an original and expertly implemented game system that manages to offer both complexity and simplicity all at once, and in just the right amount of each. It works like this. You have three shot types of three colours, and there are three colours of enemy craft. Shoot an enemy of one colour with the same colour shot, and you'll recharge your health bar. Use a different colour, and you'll either charge your bomb attack, or simply inflict a larger amount of damage. Keeping track of what colour does what in your head can be a bit too much to ask, but the game very helpfully and unobtrusively but clearly indicates at the bottom of the screen what effect your currently in use shot will have on what colour of enemy. The game takes place across four or five futuristic Aztec inspired stages, and this theme is fantastically explored both in the sharp imaginative visuals and through the brilliant music that would be soothing if it didn't have a wonderfully worked in Frizen of Threat that complements the background work perfectly. There is a story, but while some of the accompanying artwork is quite striking, it's wisely kept to a minimum, and for the most part you are left to simply run through the stages, dodging, shooting, and constantly considering which shot is going to be best serve you at any given moment. So, so far, so good. We can see that the gimmick is in fact no such thing, and the derogatory aspect of the term Euroshmup does not apply. So what else have we got? Well, not a lot. Power Rumi's problem is that this review is essentially already over. There are no extra options beyond the training mode, there are no different characters, in-game pickups or customizations, and perhaps the biggest miss of all, there's very little to the scoring system beyond surviving as long as possible and killing everything you see. In some respects I can appreciate the stripped down nature of the game, Caladrius reference, but it can quickly feel like you've seen most of what there is to see in a very short time. The normal mode will keep you coming back for a while, and the hard mode for even longer, but I finished the easy mode on just my second try, and it doesn't seem like there's much on offer beyond playing the stages over and over. Doing this is made slightly less appealing by lulls in gameplay during which you simply watch your ship drift over, admittedly very pretty, stages. There are some great little visual set pieces in these moments, but while they're very satisfying the first time you see them, they grow old quickly when you have to watch them again and again. There are online leaderboards to provide some replayability, but I was rather frustrated the first time I finished the game as I was out and about when I achieved that score, and returning home and connecting to Wi-Fi did not result in that score being uploaded to the online boards. These little issues along with the lack of modes should in no way detract from the fact that Manufacturer 43 have served up a unique and fun shmup that's highly competent both visually and in terms of gameplay, with its three colour mechanic being an absolute triumph and something that really helps the game stand out in what is, on Switch, an increasingly crowded field. But it's a shame the incredibly solid foundation wasn't expanded on at least a little bit, but I'd still award the game a very solid 7.5 out of 10. This is still a worthwhile purchase, and there should be a physical edition releasing in the future, which I personally consider richly deserved and have every intention of getting. Here's hoping we see more from this developer sometime soon too. Well, there you have it, short but sweet. Hopefully this was useful, and do let me know what you think if you've tried this one out. See you next time. Cheers.